John Henrik Clark, learn from him. As Wesley Snipes says in his introduction to the brilliant full-length documentary, A Great and Mighty Walk, on the history of John Henrik Clark, who has since passed away. He says, you can learn from him, the hidden history of the African. Learn from him, a different way of making sense of this complex and often very confusing world. This documentary contains clips of John Henrik Clark speaking from the Great Wesley Snipes independent production, which has lots, lots more interesting and informative content in it. The documentary was produced by Black Dot Media. John Henrik Clark is still highly regarded amongst the great historians of world and African history. From the first dynasty, to the invasion of Nile Valley, that was the first golden age. And from Third Dynasty came the great multi-genius, M. Hotel, the real father of medicine, who lived 1,800 years before the Greek who was called the father of medicine. And when we read the biography of the Greek, he says, I am a child of M. Hotel. John Henry Clark, was a professor of Black and Puerto Rican studies at Hunter College in New York from 1969 to 1986. He was also the Carter G. Woodson Distinguished Visiting Professor of African History at Cornell University's Africana Studies and Research Center. And in 1968, he founded the African Heritage Studies Association and the Black Caucus of the African Studies Association. All this was achieved through self-study and hard work, not via qualifications. Officially, I never finished high school in the formal sense until later years. In fact, I taught two generations before I took time out to get my BA, my master's, and my PhD. I have it all now, but uh, I'm principally self-trained. My university was the public library and well-chosen second-hand bookstores. In 1994, John Henry Clark earned a doctorate from the non-accredited Pacific Western University, now known as California Miramar University in Los Angeles having already earned a bachelor's degree there in 1992. In its obituary of John Henry Clark, the New York Times noted that the activist's rise to Professor Emeritus at Hunter College was unusual without the benefit of a high school diploma, let alone a PhD. And it was acknowledged that nobody said Professor Clark wasn't an academic original. During the Black Power Movement in the 1960s, which was advocating black rights, self-determination and unity, John Henry Clark was advocating for the studies of the African-American experience and the place of Africans in world history. He challenged the views of academic historians and helped shift the way African history was studied and taught. John Henry Clark was a scholar devoted to redressing what he saw as a systemic and racist suppression and distortion of African history by traditional scholars. And he accused his detractors of having Eurocentric views. But it was a period when we were reassessing our role in the whole of the Western world. We were tuning into Africa as much as we could and having African forums and making a serious study of African history. He met Malcolm X in 1958 and knew him until his death, and they sometimes met on a daily basis. And there was a voice, loud and clear, and analytical. We were fighting to keep from hearing that voice. It was the voice of Big Bad Malcolm X. 
who had both the national and the international message. Don Henrik Clark believed in Malcolm X and supported him 100%, and his own history of Malcolm X is unmatched in any history held in most libraries. The whole year after his death, uh, I almost got the feeling that we were having our usual conversation. I was always in it. What can I do? And finally, I got the feeling that he had said, do your best work. I was a good teacher before that. I was a better teacher and a better human being after that because I knew that being a good classroom teacher was my best work. His writing included six scholarly books and many scholarly articles. He also published general interest articles. Notably, he edited and contributed to an anthology of essays by African Americans dismissing the white writer William Styron and his novel, The Confessions of Nat Turner, as fake history because of his fictional portrayal of Nat Turner leading a rebellion in Virginia. This cannot be disputed and is one of the many truths in African history Dr. John Henrik Clark, along with other great historians, has revealed to us. Besides teaching at Hunter College and Cornell University, John Henrik Clark founded professional associations to support the study of black culture. He was a founder with Leonard Jeffries and first president of the African Heritage Studies Association. In his older years, his eyes were affected by glaucoma, and although he couldn't see well physically, he could still see the spiritual past and future. He died of a heart attack on July 16, 1998, at St. Luke's Hospital in New York City, and was buried in Green Acres Cemetery, Columbus, Georgia. There's some common sense things we can still be doing. Our communities are miniature nations. We have to control them. Control the real estate in those communities. Control the education in those communities. You cannot write the history of this nation as though it's only a white nation. It's a multicultural nation. I'm saying whatever the solution is, either we are in charge of our own destiny or we are not in charge. On that point, we got to be clear. You're either free or you're a slave. I recommend you watch Wesley Snipes' full documentary, A Great and Mighty Walk, one of the best documentaries you will ever get to watch. It's available on YouTube, so watch, listen and learn from John Henrik Clark. May his spirit and his knowledge remain with us always. And thanks to Wesley Snipes for investing in this documentation of our own history. <laughs>